Welcome to the Virtual College Exploration for All Pennsylvania Students, sponsored by the Pennsylvania Association for College Admission Counseling and StriveScan. PACAC is a nonprofit association comprised of more than 1,200 school counselors, college admission counselors, independent education consultants, and other professionals responsible for guiding students through the important transition from high school to post-secondary options. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of the many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the full schedule at pacac.org. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within a, about a week at the same website, pacac.org. I'd now like to turn it over to our presenters. Well, thank you so much uh, for joining us today as we debunk some of the more popular and prevalent myths um, concerning um, those around faith-based universities and, and attending one. So my name is Jeannie Getz and I am an enrollment coordinator um, with Regent University. And I am joined today uh, by Justin Ledesma. He's a senior assistant director of admissions at Villanova, as well as Fran Mawusi from Eastern University. She is their director of recruitment. And finally, um, we're going to hear from Martha Holland, admissions counselor with Karen University. So chances are, if you are tuning with us today, you have probably thought about attending a faith-based institution. Perhaps you are seeking answers to what your experience might be like if you attended a faith-based institution. For this presentation, we are defining faith-based as being affiliated with religion. So all of the schools represented here today um, are rooted in Christianity. And you may not realize that many of our nation's oldest schools are also uh, founded on the principles of Christianity. The schools you will hear from today are unapologetic about their Christian principles and offer students um, opportunities to not only exceed as students in world-class reputable institutions, but also to grow spiritually um, and develop spiritually as well. So after we debunk um, a few of these prevalent myths, uh, we uh, encourage you to use that Q&A feature at the bottom of the screen. Um, if you need clarification on anything that was said or more information, we will be happy to answer them as we go along through this presentation. So let's get started. Uh, the first myth, chapel and mass are required. So every faith-based institution will offer their students multiple opportunities um, to develop spiritually. You know, some institutions may build this into their coursework. Others may offer a chapel or mass several times a week at different times and in different formats and encourage their students to attend. There may be a student organization that is the Bible study or a group that volunteers their time to organizations uh, that help people who are in need. Uh, it's important to ask questions while you're in this college search process. For example, it might be helpful to learn uh, what and if there are any religious courses that you will need to take in order to successfully complete your undergraduate program at a particular school. Or maybe you're curious about uh, the faith of your professors or your students um, or your fellow students, meaning um, what type of denomination are they coming from? What's their faith background? That might be important for you to know. Um, and we wanna just encourage you to not be um, afraid to ask those questions. Um, admissions counselors are there to answer those questions and to help you find uh, the right fit for you as you go through that college search process. So at this time, I'm going to hand it over now to Justin. He's going to talk about the next two myths. All right. Thanks a lot, Jeannie. So uh, we often get this question about uh, this idea that professors at Villanova could possibly be priests, ministers, or some other religiously affiliated position uh, at our school. And I would tell you, you know, uh, it, towards that question, it's quite possible that that might happen. But the vast majority of our professors at Villanova are not priests. And uh, we certainly want to keep in mind that as we go through our hiring process with not just our staff, but also our faculty, you know, our focus is certainly to make sure that we have experts in the chosen field. 
And that can certainly include some of our priests at Villanova. And that can certainly also keep in this idea, keep the idea that, uh, you know, uh, that the priests are also experts in other areas, not just theology and philosophy. So towards that idea, just as an example with us at Villanova, we employ 1,059 professors at Villanova. And again, going back to that idea of having experts in those fields, 99% of them have the highest degree that's possible in the area that they teach. So we think that's very important. But out of that 1,000 plus professors, 13 of them at Villanova are priests. So it is possible, but you know, I would tell you if you do have uh, that experience, you know, I think it could be a really great one, uh, but you are certainly going to have some really smart men and women teaching your classes at our school. And moving on to this other idea about uniforms, uh, I think back to uh, my uh, uh, elementary and high school career, I wore a uniform from kindergarten all the way through 12th grade. And I would tell you when I was getting ready to get to college, I was both excited and also a little bit apprehensive about you know, discarding that uniform. And I would say I was apprehensive because I just didn't have uh, as many clothes as a lot of my friends did at that point. And so uh, you know, I think this idea of not wearing a uniform uh, was uh, you know, certainly uh, uh, exciting. But you know, all that being said, uh, when we look at our philosophy of education at Villanova and all of our schools, we really value this idea of critical thinking, which is to say that we want you to learn how to think and we're not so focused on cramming ideas into your head. So when you look at Villanova, it is not a requirement to uh, be Catholic, to be Christian, to attend our university. It is true that the strong majority of our students do identify with the Catholic faith, about 75% of them. But I think it's also really great that 25% of our students represent a, a wide range of other religions. We have Jewish students at Villanova, we have students who are Islamic, we have students who represent other Christian denominations. And as we go through the lessons in ethics and morality, I think a lot of these ideas really transcend this notion of religious division. I think that's an important uh, notion for us. So, you know, with all that in mind, it is not required that you attend mass or chapel. You are not required to volunteer or do service. Uh, and you know, with all that in mind, I think it's also uh, you know, this notion that we want you to express yourself. And you know, we certainly don't want to take control over what you wear or other ways of how you uh, express your personality. So students have asked me in the past, you know, what is the fashion vibe at Villanova? And I'm very hard pressed to you know, really pinpoint it. Because I think as you walk around campus, you will see all sorts of things when it comes to clothing. Uh, you'll find students you know, who are straight out of the J. J. Crew catalog. You'll see students you know, who always wear jeans and a t-shirt. Uh, it is a wide range of things that are preppy and punk and, uh, and anything else that you can think of. So uh, you know, with that in mind, it is not required that you wear a uniform. So with that, that's everything from me. I'm gonna turn things over to Fran to talk about a few other ideas. Thanks, Justin. Um, so you, you said a lot already concerning one of the myths and that is um, I have to be a Christian or I have to be Catholic, right? And just like you um, uh, would go to a Catholic school and take Bible courses um, when you're like from kindergarten to 12th grade, um, it's similar here. But I think the difference is a lot of students want to be at a Christian college or they want to be at a Catholic college. So they're deliberately and intentionally choosing um, these colleges as one of their options. And so that's how we like to look at it is that, no, you don't have to be a Christian and you don't have to be a Catholic. However, if you are, you will continue to grow in your faith. You will continue to have an environment where um, you might have um, at your disposal a chapel or you might have uh, spiritual grow groups. And so for students who wanna continue to grow in their faith, it's a awesome opportunity for them to continue to grow. And so our campuses are open um, to everyone. You don't have to provide a profession of faith. Um, we've had an atheist on our campus, and I mean, he was pretty proud of himself. And that's fine because 
um, the campus is open. And if anything, we can learn from one another. And I've, I've recruited students who are from different um, faith backgrounds. And so it's not a requirement to be a Christian. It's not a requirement to be Catholic. Um, for some of our colleges, however, it is um, necessary for our professors to sign a statement of faith because they are integrating faith with education in the classroom. And we would like to know that that is consistent. Um, in addition to that, thinking about my degree from a faith-based school, will will it not will it make me competitive um, in the job search? And so I'm looking at the fact that the best thing for you to do is to be a great student. <laughs> and beyond that, the college that you attend is going to um, going to help you in your job search. But I will say that a lot of students, and I've had parents who will sit at the table during a visit and they will look at me and say, what can they do with a youth ministry degree? And I'll have to explain to them that there's, um, there's, it's a profession and that students can get a job in youth ministry in a church or in para youth ministry. But we also offer uh, majors just like any other college, all of us do education, business, engineering, they're all majors that we offer at our universities and we're competitive. And in, in a lot of cases, um, you see that as a result of the placement rates at our colleges. Most of us are 90% and above when you graduate, you're either in your field, in, re, in a related field, or you're in graduate school or maybe you're taking a year off to serve. And so that's pretty much the proof that our schools are competitive and that if you go to a faith-based school, you're not going to lose anything. If anything, you're going to gain so much more. And so that's what I have to share today. I'm going to hand it over to Martha. So another myth in regards to a faith-based school is that the only courses I'm able to study are related to the Bible. Um, so when students think of a faith-based um, university, they tend to think that we just offer those Bible-related courses. Um, what's unique about Karen as well as um, all of these other universities is that we offer other majors, not just Bible-related. So some of our top programs here at Karen are business, education, pre-med. Um, we have over 70 different programs and majors, but um, here at Karen, we do make sure, like what Fran was saying, to integrate our faith into all of our classes. Um, and then the next and last myth is faith-based schools are closed-minded and my college experience will be limited. Um, so a lot of professors come from obviously different walks of life and bring in a rich diversity of opinion um, into the classroom as well as also into the community. Um, they are always open to dialoguing and new ideas, which is something that I found was very beneficial, especially being a student. Um, but a lot of our students may think that a faith-based school may limit your college experience, but um, I can personally say how that's not true. Um, my time here at Cairn um, was actually the opposite of limiting. Um, as an alumni of Cairn, at first I was a little bit nervous uh, when choosing a faith-based college, um, not only going to a faith-based school, but also the fact that it was a little bit smaller. Um, but I actually had a ton of opportunities at the school, both as a student um, and even right out of, out of college as well. Um, at faith-based colleges and at Cairn, we do have a career center. Um, that helps our students to build job resumes as well as just connect our current students as well as our alumni to uh, different jobs in the area that seek for specifically Karen grad students to work for them, um, which is very beneficial. But um, here at Karen University, our mission statement is what pretty much makes us who we are and what we do. Um, and our job is to educate men and, women of, what, men and women of character to serve Christ in the church, society, and the world. So we always encourage our students to also go off of campus um, to get that experience outside. So. Great, thank you. Well, now that we've debunked some of these prevalent myths out there, uh, we wanna take a few minutes um, for each school to sort of give you a snapshot um, of our programs and the benefits of attending a faith-based institution. So because I'm talking already, uh, we'll go ahead and we'll start with Regent University first. Um, so we are a four-year private Christian university. Um, we're located in Virginia Beach, Virginia, on beautiful coastal Virginia. Um, we're also located online. So um, out of our 11,000 students, 4,400 of them are undergraduates who are either commuting to campus, living on campus, or taking courses online with us. Um, our students come from all 50 states, uh, 90 countries, and um, 40 different denominations. Uh, this year's incoming freshmen 
had an average GPA of 3.39, as you can see here on, on that little green box. Um, and the average um, SAT scores were between 990 and 1220, and ACT between 19 and 25. I do wanna stress at Regent though, we look at the student holistically. So we're not just looking at these test scores. Um, we're looking at you as a person, we're looking at your recommendations, we're looking at um, maybe if you've done any volunteer work, um, and we do want to also say, um, due to the, the current pandemic, um, we understand the challenges of scheduling and actually getting able to take those SATs. Um, so we are test optional this year. Um, we do, however, encourage our students to continue to reschedule those tests if they can, um, just because those test scores do give us more complete picture um, your, or complete your academic profile as a student. Um, so Regent University, we are regionally accredited. This is the gold standard of accreditation. It's the, the highest, most prestigious accreditation um, that a school can earn. And uh, I wanna say that all the schools um, represented here today are also regionally accredited. So rest assured, um, coming to any one of these schools um, that you're hearing from today, um, you're gonna get a great, um, very respected education. Um, Regent is um, in the top 5% of affordability as far as private Christian universities. Um, we are only one of 22 schools to um, get that A rating for our comprehensive liberal arts curriculum. Um, our faculty student ratio is 17 to one. So we uh, really value this, this small intimate class size because it facilitates you know, conversations between students, but also with faculty. And I think that relationship with your faculty is going to be so important as you move through your time um, as a student, but then as, as you become an alumni. Um, it's, they're a great resource for networking and to help you know, build your career as well. Um, so 90% of our faculty do hold that terminal degree. And that wor those words, if you haven't heard that before, just simply means um, the highest degree in a field. So at Regent University, um, Rest assured that your professors are experts in their field. A lot of them are currently practicing in their field as well. And I can probably speak for all the schools here today that that's true for all these schools that you're gonna hear from today. Um, again, you're gonna get a world-class education from any of these schools. Um, and lastly, before we go on, um, I just wanna point out that Regent University for eight years in a row has received um, best online bachelor's program in Virginia from US News and World Report. So this is, especially timely in this um, current COVID climate. So we were able to transition our students who were um, on campus pretty seamlessly last spring um, due to the, the pandemic and that strong foundation of online courses that we offer. So moving forward, um, at Regent University, we offer over 135 different programs of study. Um, these are in the most popular and relevant majors. Um, students can choose from coursework, like I said, both on campus and online. These online courses um, are, are geared towards students who are either adult learners or they um, need that flexibility in their schedule or um, maybe they want to study in a different part of the country or around the world. So um, at Regent University, I would say um, a, a large percentage of our undergraduate students are taking courses online with us. So like I said before, uh, Regent University is in the top 5% of affordability for Christian universities. Um, you can see here uh, that we are priced uh, very affordably. Um, the graph on the left represents our on-campus traditional student. Um, and so we've kind of, you know, some of these will change depending on the housing that's on-campus housing, but we have, you know, different levels of housing, of course, you can choose from. Um, but 85% of our students do receive some sort of financial aid, whether that's need-based or merit-based or a combination of both. Um, if you choose to take uh, courses with us online, um, that's dictated by your course load. So if you're full-time with us, that means you're 12 or more credits per semester, and that's at 395 per credit hour. And then part-time is anything less than that 12 um, or more credit per, uh, credits per semester, and that's at 450 um, per credit hour. So we do have a number of institutional opportunities for aid um, at Regent University, but we also um, encourage all students um, as they're going through this college search process to go ahead and fill out that FAFSA form. That's gonna help you um, learn what you're eligible for as far as loans, but also grants. And you know, grants are, it's free money that you do not have to pay back. So it's really important that you don't lose out 
on that opportunity. I know a lot of students, they hear about the FAFSA and they automatically think it's loans, they have to pay back high interest, but there are a number of grants that you may be eligible for. Um, so we don't want you to leave that money on the table there. And finally, before I leave the slide, um, that website right here um, is our net price calculator. It's an excellent resource that you can plug in your individual numbers um, based on your, your circumstances and get a pretty good idea of what you're gonna be spending at Regent University per semester. So at Regent University, uh, we have a number of resources for students um, to be successful. Um, so imagine you the student in here in the center of the screen. Um, these are, this is a snapshot, like I said, of all the resources. We have a lot more resources. But one of the ones I wanna highlight is our um, Office of Career and Talent Management. Um, so they're going to, I think just as Martha had told you about her school and offering um, a lot of resources for current students and alumni as far as finding work and learning how to um, network and how to search for jobs and how to interview better, how to write that resume. Um, at Regent, we also do offer um, premier career assessments as well to kind of help you figure out, you know, what direction would, would work best for your personality or your goals that you have. So moving on, um, about 30% of our students at Regent University are military affiliated in some way. So that means uh, they're either an ROTC, um, they're active duty, National Guard, reserves, um, they could be a veteran or a spouse or a child of a service member. Um, if you're one of these students, just rest assured that we do have a dedicated military resource center that will help you to um, navigate your benefits, and also uh, we understand those special circumstances that you might be going through um, and challenges that maybe a traditional on-campus student might not have. Um, in addition, we have nine collegiate sports at Regent University. We are NCCAA Division I. So NCCAA stands for the National Christian College Athletics Association. Uh, we offer men and women's cross country, track and field, uh, basketball, soccer, and cheerleading. We have over 55 student organizations. We've got everything from surf club, we are very close to the beach, um, to swing dancing. Um, if there's an organization that we don't have that you're interested in, um, as a student, you are able to start that club, which is, which is pretty great. So finally, we offer many opportunities for students to grow spiritually um, through traditional and, and untraditional formats um, throughout the week um, and throughout the, the year that you're on campus with us. And finally, um, I just want to point out here that the information on the right hand side of the screen, um, this will take you directly to our undergraduate page where you can learn more about our programs um, and get more details about some of the topics that I covered today. But without further ado, as we move along in this, this quick snapshot, I'm going to hand it back over to Justin and Villanova. All right, thank you. So uh, I always like to start off uh, with this picture here, this slide, as I think it's just a great shot of Villanova's campus. Uh, it really highlights all that green space that we have. And if you didn't know, uh, Villanova is uh, in the suburbs of Philadelphia, about 12 miles away from the fifth biggest city in the country. And I think our situation is really the best of both worlds. We have this picturesque campus with all those big fields. You can see in the center, the ellipse, which is a great place for students to hang out. Uh, you can certainly uh, you know, have your lunch over there and uh, be seen by your friends, find your friends and everything along those lines. But, uh, you know, it also allows our students, uh, you know, in this uh, suburban campus, you know, to really focus in on their studies and to get to bed at a decent hour. But if our students are looking to do things that are a little bit more exciting, of course, in the midst uh, of a, a global pandemic, uh, I think our students are trying to stay put for everyone's safety. But in more normal years, our students will go to Philadelphia to check out restaurants and concerts and uh, sporting events and a wealth of other things. Things. And of course, on a more practical sense, having that big city nearby really lends itself to some great opportunities for internships, research, and everything along those lines. And so uh, before we go to this next slide, I'll, I was just going to point out, if you look at the horizon of that picture, you can see Philadelphia off in the distance. So only about 12 miles away uh, from campus, pretty easy to, to get there. So going uh, to that university seal, you know, looking at Villanova's campus, it reminds me of how much I do like to travel 
travel. And uh, when I do get to travel, if I'm anywhere near in the proximity of other colleges and universities, I always want to see these places and learn more about how, how other schools approach education. And the first thing that I look for when I am on that college campus is for a university seal. I think these seals can give you such a great sense of a school's history, but also at the same time, really give you an understanding as to what that school hopes to achieve, you know, their aspirations, their sense of direction. So when you take a look at Villanova Seal, the first thing I would draw your attention to is the year that we are established, 1842. So if you do the math on that, we've been around for 178 years and history and tradition are important ideas to us. But I would also add that 178 years is plenty of time to really establish a very strong reputation. And I think folks all across the country do understand that we're doing some really outstanding things in our classroom. And I think that can be evidenced by what happens to our students once they graduate. So if you take a look at the next slide, we can share all sorts of statistics with you about how we keep our students on the right track towards graduation. So first year to second year retention rate, 96%. About 84% of our students will do an internship before they get to graduation. With a closer look, you would see that about half of our students even take on second internship opportunities. And of of course, the ultimate finish line graduation, our six year graduation rate is about 90%. Now, when I mentioned that, most parents uh, kind of balk and they sort of say, We don't want to talk about graduation in six years. You know, what is everyone doing in four years? And if you want to know about that, it's about 89% who are finishing their degree programs within four years at Villanova. And when you look at our class of 2019, I would point out that close to 97% of that group had found their first jobs. They went off to grad school, law school, or med school. So I I think our students really hit that ground running uh, once they graduate. And I think that's something that a lot of people can take comfort in as they uh, progress through their time at Villanova. Now we'll go over to the next slide and we'll focus back in on the university seal. Uh, once again, you know, there's a lot of religious symbolism. Of course, this is the faith-based presentation. So uh, we are a Catholic school. There are so many ways to know that we're a Catholic school, the church on campus, the priests and religious brothers who live, work, and teach at Villanova. Most of them belong Belong to the Augustinian order. And the Augustinians take their name from St. Augustine. And if you don't know who Augustine is, he lived in the fourth and fifth century. He served as bishop in Africa, and he's really known for being one of the Catholic Church's great thinkers. So a lot of his ideas on education still impact what we do at Villanova today. So Augustine often said that in education, we seek not only to transform students' minds, but also their hearts as well. And I think it's that idea that really speaks about the type of students who want to come to our school and the types of students that we want to recruit. So I would certainly describe them as the ones who want to do great things in the classroom. So that's why I think grades and test scores in years past have been big parts of the application process. But similar to what Jeannie mentioned, we are test optional for the first time this year, and we can certainly you know, review an application with or without those tests. And we can certainly answer more questions about that as we press on, okay? But you know, when it comes to you know, the, the application itself, it's more than just tests. We're looking for students who have a passion for things outside of the classroom. And I think that's often reflected by those three Latin words that are on that university seal. Veritas, Unitas, and Caritas. When we speak about this idea of Veritas, that of course translates as truth. And of course we are an academic institution. So the pursuit of truth is one of our biggest priorities. So if you take a look at the next slide, you will see the academic majors that are offered at Villanova. There are more than 50 of them organized into five categories, liberal arts, sciences, business, engineering, and then also nursing. Those are the five areas at Villanova and the ones that we are certainly most well known for. So certainly when we talk about truth, it's not just the academic piece, but of course, you know, the this perspective that you can get. And I think as students learn uh, about each other, they can certainly understand that truth can mean different things depending on your own point of view. And with about 6,500 undergrads, I think we have a lot of different perspective that we could share with you. And as we put together that freshman class, about 1,600 students all together and really shape the that the dynamics of that class, I think we really keep in mind this idea of diversity of thought as we put them together. So with uh, some specific categories, we want representation from as many different groups as we can make possible. There's a pretty even split between the men and women, 51% female, 49% male. 
representation from 50 different countries at our school and students coming from 48 of the 50 states. And of course, it's not just the states that you come from. We really equally value the perspective that comes along with growing up in a suburban environment, in an urban environment, in the rural areas as well. I think, you know, we all value that. And of course, we also take a look at socioeconomics and ethnicity. When we bring all these students together, I think it's such a great thing that our students are learning from each other and learning together, which gets us to our second word and back over on the slide, uh, you'll see UNITAS, unity. And that's where we talk about community at Villanova. And if you take a look at the, this next picture, I'll, this shows you a little bit of uh, more of campus. Uh, we guarantee housing for freshmen, sophomore and junior year. And almost all of our students are living in our buildings at Villanova. Uh, so uh, we will point out there is a little bit of an exception with almost all the seniors being off campus. But uh, recently, about a quarter of them have returned back to campus with the addition of six new residence halls at our school. So again, this welcoming community, which I think relates us to our third word, caritas, love and charity. And this is where we talk about volunteerism. There are so many examples of how uh, we can serve other people. Of course, it's not required, but my favorite one is to talk about Special Olympics. We run the largest college-sponsored Special Olympics program in the world. And that's just one thing that you can be involved in. And we are so excited, so proud that in, uh, in, in previous years, we've had as many as 5,000 athletes competing at Villanova. Nova. And with that, you know, I, I kind of wrap up with those three words because those really drive the things that we do. And we'll certainly at this point turn it over to Fran to talk about Eastern University. Thank you so much, Justin. Well, welcome to Eastern University. Um, that is a, a nice view of one of our residence halls there. Um, but I just want to talk about that state of the art turf right there. Um, we kind of we kind of talk about that a lot at Eastern because uh, athletics are pretty big there as well. So looking at our agenda, um, I just want to go over a few things very quickly about our location, academics, faith community, studying abroad, scholarship opportunities, campus life, faith and service, clubs and activities, athletics uh, admissions process, and our scholarship and financial aid. Um, I do want to mention that Eastern has been um, ranked one of the most beautiful Christian colleges, um, college campuses in the world. And if you take a look at our campus there, that water wheel right there is very, very, um, it's a, one of the attractions of Eastern. So a lot of uh, weddings will take place there and a lot of people like to come and take their pictures, but it's a beautiful campus. Um, right outside of Philadelphia. We're in the King of Prussia area. We're in a little town called uh, St. David's, which is about eight blocks long and eight blocks wide. But if you're familiar with Villanova, then you've been in our area. So we're right outside of Philadelphia um, and we are a small Christian liberal arts university. And we also are very central to a lot of other areas like um, New York and DC and Baltimore and places in New Jersey like the shore that you might want to visit so very centrally located. If we take a look at our majors here, I would say the top majors are education and business. So we've been doing some really exciting things in both of those majors. But we also have um, a major in nursing, which has been doing phenomenal. We had a 100% passing rate on the NCLEX, you know, that licensing exam that you need in order to uh, serve as a nurse. And so uh, that, that program has been growing by leaps and bounds. And we'd like to also highlight some of our four-in-one programs, one that we have with Temple University. I like to say that you get the best of both worlds with our forensics um, chemistry program, four years at Eastern and one year at Temple University. And then we also have a form one program with uh, the Villanova University. It's in our engineering program. So it's four years at Eastern, one year at Villanova, and you come out with two degrees, one in uh, your bachelor's of mathematics, and the second is in engineering, a master's of science in engineering. And so if you want to look at those things, I, I, I would encourage you to check out our website at eastern.edu and you'll see a lot about our different majors here. But when you talk about a Christian college, um, yes, we have education, we do well. Our teachers are scoring in the top 96 percentile in teacher certification. Yeah, we do business, great business programs, all right? But we also do very well in youth ministry. 
and missions in anthropology, theology, and biblical studies. And those are majors that you might not find at a lot of different colleges, but you can find them at Eastern, four-year programs. And I, and I laugh at a lot of students who come in and they think that youth ministry is going to be easy. You're just going to be planning activities for the youth. Oh, no. Uh, it's a very demanding program. And some students will just take youth intro to youth ministry um, just to get familiar uh, with that major. And maybe they're not even going into a field, but they have a difficult time getting through the class. And so our, um, our programs that are faith related are very strong and they will prepare you to go into ministry and to do well. You'll be skilled going into ministry. And so I'm going to talk about fast pass because when you're looking at these different majors, maybe not with engineering, maybe not with nursing or even the Temple University program, but with a lot of our programs, you can graduate in three years. So let's talk about psychology or, or one of our other programs um, like education. You can graduate in three years with what we call fast pass. And what that means is that you're able to take classes in the summer, two classes online, which will either accelerate um, your learning experience and allow you to graduate in three years, or if you're deciding to major um, or double major or major in one area and minor in the other, it allows you to kind of do that with ease. It's also good for our athletes who maybe want to take a lighter load uh, in, in, this, in the uh, semester when they're um, actively playing, and that allows them to kind of have a little ease in, in, in balancing work and athletics. And so Fast Pass is something that I definitely want you guys to take a look at, and you'll find that on our website as well. And so if you look at here, you're going to see that there, you see small learning environments. Our student faculty ratio is 10 to 1. So you get to know the professors, they get to know you. Um, and, and that's an experience that, again, you can't say you're going to get everywhere. And it's not uncommon to see our faculty sitting in the dining commons with a student just shooting the breeze or in Jam and Java, which is one of our cafes, um, just extending that classroom uh, hour and, and kind of learning a lot more um, outside of the classroom. And if you also look here, you'll see uh, that we have um, the most advanced observatory within a three hour radius of our school. And so Dr. Bradstreet was there with that telescope and you might wanna check out our website. Um, studying abroad at Eastern is big. We encourage students to study abroad. I usually tell them I'll drive them to the airport but we do some wonderful things with study abroad. So if you are considering uh, studying at a university outside of the United States, and we also have study away as well, but studying outside of the United States and also being paired with a family while you're there to get a cultural experience, consider study abroad. Our ethos at Eastern is faith, reason, and justice. Well, we probably could figure out what faith is, right? If you're looking at Christian colleges, it's your belief system. And when I'm teaching freshman orientation, we go through this in depth. Faith, what do you believe? Why do you believe it? And so when we're looking at faith, you're going to have an opportunity at Eastern to integrate faith with education. What a wonderful opportunity to be able to grow in your faith and to grow academically and gain skills at the same time. And then you're also able to grow with those around you as well. There's a, a picture, wow, a picture of Dr. Bradstreet. That, that observatory is phenomenal. It is the most advanced observatory within three hour radius of our school. And Dr. Bradstreet has been called upon by NASA kind of to get his advice on things. So he's a pretty cool guy and pretty smart um, also. But when you talk about reason, you're talking about intellect. And when you're talking about intellect, you're talking about what you're going to be doing for those four years. What are you gaining intellectually? How are you engaging in study? What research have you done? It's important for Christians to be able to, to consider reason as well. Reasoning your face, reasoning your, um, your, uh, your field of study, all of those things you can do at Eastern. And how about justice? If you look at the guy over to your left, that is uh, Brian Stevenson. He's a student, um, former student, who graduated from Eastern. He went on to Harvard Law School, graduated top of his, his class, Law Review. And instead of going to a high-powered company to work as an attorney, he went to Alabama to defend poor people on death row. 
he defends poor people who don't have uh, the type of, of defense that someone with money might get. And there was a movie about that. Uh, it's called Just Mercy. Uh, Michael B. Jordan was played Brian Stevenson in the movie. So um, I like to say this is a product of Eastern. This is what Eastern produces. Those people who want to go out and change the world, even if it requires some sacrifice. Athletics, we're NCAA Division Three. So we like to say we have uh, athlete scholars instead of scholar, uh, scholar athletes instead of athlete scholars. And that allows our students to have a balance um, with the Division Three programs. But it also means that there is not um, a scholarship that goes with athletics. But you want to check those out as well. And so when you're looking at um, next steps at Eastern, our application process is to apply online, which is free of charge. And then in addition to that, we'll just need your transcript from your counselor and we'll need a recommendation. We are going ACT, SAT blind this year. And you'll also find on our website information about the financial aid that's awarded to you as a result of being admitted to Eastern. So thank you so much for considering Eastern and I'm gonna turn it over to Martha. Thank you, Fran. So I'm going to be talking about Karen University um, we are a four-year private non-for-profit liberal arts institution. Um, again, my name is Martha, uh, but I'm going to be mentioning three important categories in regards to our university and what we feel is important when researching. Um, our slogan for our university is just right. So we want it to be just right fit, size, and school, in which you'll probably hear me say a few times. But um, the first important aspect about Karen is our mission statement. Um, you can read it above, but our right mission is pretty much to be rooted in Christ and ready for what's next. Um, when introducing people to Karen University, the first thing that we do like to begin with, especially on our tour, is our mission statement. Um, it's who we are and what we do, and uh, we want our students to not only follow it, but also be able to live it out. Um, on our next slide, I'm going to talk about um, our location. Um, this is important because we want it to be a right place. So we have big city opportunities as well as we are a small town community. Um, I'll start by describing Karen. So we're located in Lenkhorn, Pennsylvania. Uh, we are in, we are right outside of Philly. So we are about an hour and a half from New York City as well as two hour and a half hours from Washington, DC. Um, our campus is unique though because it is in a quiet suburban neighborhood with lots of trees and uh, places to sit outside. Um, a big thing that our students love is the pond that we have. People come to fish there. Um, I, I hammock there as a student um, or you can have lunch with friends, but um, all in all, it's a great location because we are just a short train ride from Philly, uh, where students go to enjoy what Justin was saying, some good food, um, art and sports, as well as just opportunities for jobs and ministries in the area. Um, and then our next important thing is the size. Um, it's important to look up at the size because you want it to be the right size as well as the right um, value, pretty much. So. Um, we're not too big, but also not too small. We have an affordable cost, but also a lasting impact, um, which plays a valuable role when deciding on a college. Um, but yeah, our, our students are um, not just care for, but, but um, they are care for, they're not just a number, but they are also a student and a whole person. Um, our students benefit richly from our on-campus opportunities, as well as our faculty and staff who um, know their passions and desire them to seek as well. Uh, we are competitively priced, as you can see above, but we're always adding new scholarships and opportunities to be able to lower your overall cost. Um, one thing that I did want to mention is you can look at some of our um, some of our financial aid scholarships that we have in house um, on our website. But uh, we do encourage you, like what Jeannie was saying, to fill out the FAFSA so you know how much money you're receiving and how much aid that you will also get as well. But um, our student to faculty ratio is 12 to 1. Um, that's something that's super important for our students because they can get um, that better aspect of um, being in that community and family field during um, the classroom. So, um, but yeah, that is more about Karen. And so now we are going to move on uh, to our question and answer session.
So we want to thank you so much for attending our presentation today. Um, we hope that you found it useful for not only um, looking at these particular universities um, on the screen, but also um, as you are participating in that college search to find the right faith-based institution for you. Um, just know that um, we, we welcome your questions, not only at these, these schools here, but every school is going to welcome your question. Um, it's important to find the right fit uh, for you. And I promise you that the school, um, there's a school out there that, that is meant for you that is going to be a right fit. So continue to ask those questions. Um, go on to these websites and really just scrub them. I mean, there's so much information um, to be learned from these websites. And um, you can connect with um, any of us about any questions about our institutions or just the college search in general. Um, but we'll leave this screen up if you want to take a picture of it or if you want to do a screenshot. Um, but we look forward to hearing uh, from you in the future. Thank you. All right, thank you for joining us. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. So we would appreciate any feedback that you have. Just a reminder, this is one of the many sessions being hosted. So be sure to sign up for additional sessions at pacac.org. And this session will be live um, on pacac.org in about a week. Thank you so much, have a great day.